doing fabulous this Sunday evening. I know I'm home from church. I am comfortable. Oh my goodness. I have had a blessed weekend. Went to corporate prayer Saturday night. It was the most incredible um, presence of God that I've ever experienced in my life because His presence, His glory is just getting stronger and stronger. So I just, in my heart, what God did in that prayer with me and on the way home, I will never, ever, ever forget. And guys, I just want to encourage anyone out there, just realize that everything that you have need of is in God's presence. Oh, there is so much healing that He can give us, sometimes that we don't even know. There's deliverance. There is restoration. Oh, my Lord Jesus. He is so wonderful. <laughs> he is so wonderful. So, guys, I just encourage you, just run into His arms and let Him hold you and love you. Let Him sing over you. Let Him just pour into you and do what only He can. <laughs> anyway... Okay, guys, I actually want to, uh, I want to do this, uh, this, um, talk about the new wine. And this is actually what I was trying to do all day Wednesday, and my phone would not let me make this video. The devil did not want this to be heard. But praise the Lord, we're going to do it tonight in Jesus' name. Okay, I am out of the Smith Wigglesworth book on the Holy Spirit, and this is the new wine. And it was so cool because, my pastor's wife preached Wednesday night on the new wine and just about not settling for just enough, just this is good enough where we are, what we've had with God, but to keep being relentless and persevering. So praise God. So anyway, um, this is what it says. It is a settled thing in the glory that in the fullness of time, the latter rain has to be greater than the former. Oh, I know that's right. Yes, it is. It will be. It will be. It will be. Because we are already seeing a move of God around the world, around the nation, that God is pouring out His Spirit in the churches, in His body, in His beloveds. Oh my God, He is so awesome. So Zechariah 10 and 1 and James 5 and 7. It says, some of our hearts have been greatly moved by the former rain, but it is the latter rain that we are crying out for. Oh, yes, yes, Holy Spirit, move. It says, what will it be like when the fullness comes and the heart of God is satisfied? Oh, it's going to be so overwhelming. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bless the Lord. It says, on the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts 2 and 4. What a lovely thought that the Holy Spirit had such sway. I love that word. Had <laughs> such sway that the words were all his. Oh, bless the Lord. We are having to learn whether we like it or not that our end is God's beginning. See, that's what happens when we crucify our flesh and we fast and we get before God. And into us is the beginning of Him. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Okay, it says, then it is all God. And isn't that what we want? We want it to be all God. Yes, Lord, yes. Okay, it says, the Lord Jesus stands forth in the midst with such divine glory. Oh, yes, Lord. <laughs> And men are impelled, filled, and led so perfectly. Yes, we are. Nothing else will meet the need of the world. Oh, I know that's right. Yes, Lord. He says, we see that there are there is something beautiful about Peter and John. It says, when we read that, people realize that they had been with Jesus. Oh, that's the greatest cry of my heart, that people would be like, oh, she's been with Jesus. She she, she has this characteristic. She acts like him. She speaks like him. Her countenance is a, a righteous, pure, godly countenance. Oh, bless the Lord. Okay, and that was Acts 4 and 13. It says, there, are something, there is something so real, so after the order of the master about them. It says, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is so awesome. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. Verse 13 it says, <clears throat> It says, may all in the temple glorify Jesus. It can be so. The one thing that was more remar that was more marked than anything else in the life of Jesus was the fact that the people glorified God in him. Oh, bless the Lord. And when God is glorified and gets the right of way and the wholehearted attention of his people, everyone is as he is filled with God. <sighs> Oh, beloveds, just take that in. Mm, he is so good. <laughs> he 
<laughs> yes, Lord. Oh, my Jesus, my Jesus. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, I love him, Lord. Love you, Jesus. Okay. It says, the only thing that will help people is so to speak the latest things that God has given us from the glory. I said, oh, yes, and amen. Guys, and that's the thing. When we get before God and he fills us up and we we be, be that mouthpiece for God, we just, we speak and we just minister out of everyday life. We're just so full of him that as we love and we live and we laugh and we walk through this life and just being who God has called us to be, whatever your occupation is, you just, when you're so filled with God, guys, then in that moment, in that moment, guys, he just gushes out of us. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Okay. It says, um, there is nothing outside salvation. There must be nothing left seen or spoken about except the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. We are new create, uh, creatures in Christ Jesus, baptized into a new nature. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his, his heart will flow rivers of living water. <laughs> Oh, I love Jesus. <laughs> John 7 and 38. The very life of the risen Christ is to be in everything we are and do, moving us to do his will. It says, there is something that we have not yet touched in the spiritual realm, but praise God for the thirst to be in this meeting. He says, praise God, the thirst is of God. The desires is of God. Now remember guys, this was Smith Wigglesworth as he was doing his sermons. So this was part of his sermon that he was, and guys, you know, his time was back in the 1800s and I, uh, the late 1800s, I believe actually, let me let me see if that was correct. Um, 1859 to 1947. Okay, guys, sorry, I had to stop it real quick. Okay, I'm going to read this part again. It says, there is something we have not yet touched in the spiritual realm, but praise God for the thirst to be in this meeting. Now, once again, like I said, this was Miss Wigglesworth. This was his sermon, but um, that's why it says in this meeting. But he said, praise God, the thirst is of God. The desire is of God. The plan is of God and the purposes of God. It is God's plan, God's thought, God's vessel, and God's servant. We are in the world to meet the need, but we are not of this world or of its spirits. Guys, remember that. We are in this world to meet the needs of those around us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. As we become an empty vessel, this treasure is in earthen vessels. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. Excuse me, that's John 17, 15. And 16, he said, we are partakers of this divine nature, 2 Peter 1 and 4, to manifest the life of Jesus to the world. How awesome is that, you guys? Praise God. He said, this is God incarnate in humanity, okay? Um, he said, on the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, cost... <laughs> He said, oh, God, is, God is, his presence is so intoxicating. Hallelujah. He says, others mocking said they are full of new wine, Acts 2 and 13. This is what we want. You say new wine, a new order, a new inspiration, a new manifestation, new, 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 new wine. Hallelujah. A power all new in itself as if you were born as you are into a new day, a new creation. Glory be to God. We, beloved are in a new day and we are in we are a new creation hallelujah glory be to god he said no man ever spoke like this man john 7 and 46 he said this new wine has a freshness about it and yes it does it has a beauty about it and yes it does it has a quality about it and yes it does it creates in others the desire for the same taste guys as we get hungry for the things of God it is going to spread like wildfire it's contagious our faith is contagious our, our, our walk with God is contagious when you're on fire and you're oozing and goozing and ushing and spilling out you are contagious glory be to God oh bless the Lord, bless the Lord. He said at Pentecost, some saw, but 3,000 felt, tasted, and enjoyed. Some looked on, others drank with a new faith, never seen before, a new manifestation, a new realization, all divine, a new thing. It came straight from heaven, hallelujah, from the throne of the, glory, uh, of the glorified Lord. Guys, think about this. This is coming from heaven. It's pure, unfiltered. Oh, glory be to God. Yes, Lord. 
Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Guys, this stirs me, the fire and the passion of God, to know that we have no limit to the things of him. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Okay, it says, it is God's purpose to fill us with that new wine, to make us ready to, to burst forth with new rivers, with fresh energy, and with not, not feeling tired. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, God manifested in the flesh. That is what we want. This is what God wants. And it satisfies everybody. All the people say, we have never seen anything like this. Acts 2, 7 through 12. The disciples rejoiced in its new, and in it began new. Others were cut to the heart, crying out to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 37 says, then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So receive the gift of the Holy Spirit right now, right where you're at. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire and the power of God, of God in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus it says for this promise is to you and to your children. Yes, it is. And all who call, who are the, uh, who who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. That is all of us, yes, Lord. And with, and it says, and with many other words, be testified and exhorted and exhort them, saying, "Be saved from this perverse generation." That's verse thirty-eight. Through 40. Okay, guys, the last part. It says, what shall we do, men and brethren? What shall we do? Believe, stretch out, press on, press on. Let there be a new entering in, a new passion to have it. Yes, we must be beside ourselves. We must drink deeply of the new wine so that the multitude may be satisfied and find satisfaction. The new wine must have a new wineskin that is necessary of a new vessel. Matthew 9 and 17. If anything of that is all of, if anything is of the old is left, not put to death, destroyed. There will be a tearing and a breaking. The new wine and the old vessel will not work in harmony. Oh God, we want the new wine. Yes, Lord, pour it in. Fill us up, God, till we are overflowing. It must be the new wine and the new wine skin. He said, then there will be nothing to discard when Jesus comes. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of an archangel with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise. Then all who are alive will remain and be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. First Thessalonians 4 and 16 and 17. The spirit is continually working within us to change us until the day. Oh, when we are, will be like him guys. Isn't that our desire to be like our Jesus? Oh, I know it's mine. The Lord Jesus Christ will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the work by which he is able even to do all things to him. Philippians 3 and 21. I desire that you all would be so filled with the spirit, so hungry, so thirsty that nothing will satisfy you. But seeing Jesus, I can say that is me. That has always been my desire. I want more and more and more of him and I'm not satisfied. Oh, bless the Lord. He said, we are, we are to get more thirsty every day, more, uh, he said, more dry every day until the floods come and the master passes by ministering to us and through us the same life, the same inspiration so that as he is, we are so we are in this world. First John 4 and 17. Guys, the last part says, when Jesus became the sacrifice for man, he was in great distress, but it was accomplished. I meant he said, I meant strong crying and tears, Hebrews 5 and 7. It meant the cross manward, but the glory heavenward. He said, glory descending on the cross. Truly great is the mystery of godliness. 1 Timothy 3 and 16. He cried, it is finished. John 19 and 30. Let the cry never be stopped until the heart of Jesus is satisfied. Until his plan for humanity is reached in the sons of God being manifested. Romans 8, 19. And in the earth being filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2 and 14. He said, amen and amen and amen. So Lord, right now I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ in Jesus name. Lord, that you would, Lord, let them empty them of their selves, God, so that you can pour your new wine in them, that you would purify their, their, their spirit, soul, and body. 
And God, that they would hunger and thirst of the righteousness, holiness, and truth. God, fill us up. Fill us up till we want no more. God, fill us up till we're just, we are gushing the glory and the presence and the anointing and words of wisdom and words of knowledge and speaking healing and deliverance and setting the captives free in Jesus' name. Oh, Holy Spirit, show up and show out in our homes, our churches, the schools, the White House, the legislation. Lord, through this, Lord, through this land, our regions, our communities, our towns, our homes, our ministries marriages, our businesses, God, all be glorified, move in the churches and explode with the glory of God, the the kabod, the, the glory of God, the manifest presence of God in Jesus' name. Be ready because it is coming.